Hello, this is Trevor. Today we're working on a JWT attack in Port Swigger's Web Security Academy. It is JWT authentication bypass via kid header path traversal. Excuse me. Um, so we use JWT. The server uses the kid parameter to um, get the key from the file system. Well, we've got access, we need to get access to the admin panel, delete Carlos, we have our own credentials. All right, let's check it out. Um, so we are getting to the end of this series and I would really love to know what do you wanna see next? I'm open to, you know, anything. We can do more web app stuff. We can work on like try hack me stuff. Um, Whatever you think would be interesting, I'd love to hear it. So please leave a comment. Let me know what you want to see next. What would be valuable to you or interesting or whatever. Um, sweet. So let's get a token here so we can check it out. So I'm going to log in using Wiener Peter and go to here. Copy, let's go to, let's open up Chrome and go to token.dev. I'm going to paste that. There's the kid parameter. It's HS256 and we've got the user in the sub. So what we need to do, um, the way the kid works is it's identifying the, the, key that this JWT is signed with. Um, and what this means is that, uh, remember, okay, so just back up a little bit. Um, the only way a server is able to tell if it's a valid signed JWT is by decrypting it and then, uh, getting any information it needs, especially in this case, like the, the key ID, and then base64 encode it, combine them, and then hash it, and then compare that with the key that is part of the message, right? That leaves it open to vulnerabilities when you have stuff like key ID in the header field because we may be able to do attacks like directory traversal, SQL injection, you know, however it uses this information to find the right key. So if it's using, getting it out of a database, what if we could do SQL injection in this, this key ID? If it's directory traversal, can we get it to go find a key in another, you know, find a key a file that we know, right? And that's what I believe based on this path traversal. That's what we're going to do in this lab. So how do we, as an attacker, know what files, what, you know, the contents of a file and we need it, we need to know it byte for byte, right? It needs to be exactly the same from what we, because we're going to modify this JWT, put it together, hash it, and that hash needs to be exactly equal byte for byte to what the server ends up with. So how do we do that? And the trick here is to get dev null. Dev null will return um, an empty string. And so if we sign this message with an empty string, and then we put in a path traversal here so that the server reads dev null and in return gets an empty string, hash signs it, compares the signatures, they match, they're going to trust everything that's in this, uh, in this message, including, you know, the user. Sound good? So that's our job is we're going to hash this with an empty string and then do directory traversal so that the server 
signs it with an empty string also. All right, let's get going. Let's start writing our script. I'm gonna copy link here and I'm gonna go Python utils create script. I'm gonna paste that. And uh, script already exists. Uh, what? Oh well. Vim. I only want Vim JWT authentication bypass via kid header. And it is completely ready to go. Let's uh, Python. We want uh, JWT authentication bypass via header. Nope via kid header and then let's do a dash d copy link here dash d for debug we'll put that in our command history so it's ready to go as soon as we are um let's use some of the the uh code that we've done before not this one let's use the one we did here okay Number one, we're going to get the JWT, right? So we're going to log in with Wiener Peter. That will give us a cookie. We're going to grab the JWT. So let's call it um, token, uh, orig token equals cookies session log.info orange token we're gonna that should print out the jwt there we go and now we can use our library to decode that and start working let's see utils jwt uh, we're gonna go and init it first so we'll do JWT equals JWT with a ridge token. And here we're going to do from utils dot JWT import JWT. Now we should be able to grab the JWT dot head JWT dot head and Let's log that, log.info. All right. And now we can start modifying it and signing. There's the head with the kid. So let's modify it first. So we're going to do JWT uh, dot modify part. Um, the part we're going to modify is the head. So how do I put that in there? I don't remember. Modify part. It's a dictionary. So we can just put jwt.head. And then we're going to put a dictionary of the changes. We're going to change the kid. And I'm going to do relative path traversal. And I'm going to put a, like a crap ton of these in. And the reason why is because it doesn't matter if I put too many. It can't go any further than the root directory and won't error, you know, if it tries to go, you know, further than the root directory. I don't know the right term, but then further. That's how I think of it. Kid. So there's dev null. Um, now we need to sign it. Let's, here's our sign. And we just need to provide it with a secret. So let's put uh, jwt.sign. And what does it require? Just the secret. And remember, we're going to assign it with an empty string. So let's take a look at the token equals. It does return it, right? It does. Sweet. Log.info token our token oh is that just the signature 
that's just the signature. But it does... Um, how do we rebuild it? Encode. Okay, we can do this. This is the sig. Change word, sig. Encode. So, jwt dot encode. Sig equals sig. That should be it. Token equals. Okay, let's try that one. Sweet. Here's our new token. You know what we didn't do? Modify the user, but that's okay. We can do that after we verify it works. So we're gonna do this. We're gonna do uh, blog dot get response. Excuse me. We're gonna do blog dot base URL plus my. Oh no, we can do blog dot my account so we're going to get the my account and we're going to do cookies equals session with our new token if we get a 200 uh, log dot info resp dot status code so if we get a 200 we know that the token that we just created was accepted and worked. Boom, 200. Let's check it in burp and see what that looked like. So here's the one we did in Python. We sent the 200 or we sent to get my account with our new token and boom, we got it. So all we have to do is do another jwt.modify part jwt.body and we're going to change the sub from wiener to administrator let's run that make sure we get a 200 and then we can boom 200 and your username is administrator sweet all we need now is to delete Carlos let's look how we did that in one of the last ones uh, let's do JQKU we want uh, cookies equal session token get response sure we can copy all of this and paste that here so we don't need this one anymore because we're already doing that. So we're going to set cookies uh, session to token. We did it manually here, so we're kind of duplicating effort, but that's how I did it. So then we're going to get response to get the admin page. We're going to uh, then use the delete Carlos with those cookies to delete Carlos and then check if it's solved. This has probably been the fastest one we've done in JWT, one of these labs so far, which is awesome. Other ones always seem to be, hey, uh, OX Frank, appreciate the follow. Other ones always seem to be, have something. So bam, we solved it. Right on. Um, just to reiterate what the, you know, vulnerability was, uh, the server used a key ID field in the JWT. Um, and we saw that here. Key ID field identifies the, in this case, because it's HS256, this will identify the secret that is used to hash it um, to verify the token is, is, hasn't been modified. Because it was vulnerable to path traversal, we were able to you know, modify this KID parameter to traverse up the file system to get dev null, which returns an empty string. 
and we signed it with an empty string. So both us and the server used empty string to hash and validate the contents, which of course was accepted. And then we modified it to have administrator here. That means as far as the server is concerned, we are administrator. Then we deleted Carlos and the lab was solved. Pretty sweet. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know. Thanks so much.